Hey ho, let's go. Here we go with chapter two, lesson number 16. It's the final lesson in the differentiation chapter. Woohoo, we've almost made it to the end. Parametric differentiation for objects in motion. So what is this all about? Well, if the position of a moving particle is given by parametric equations, where x is going to be a function in terms of t, and y is another function in terms of t, well, you can work out the velocity of the particle. The horizontal velocity will be given by dx by dt, and the vertical velocity will be given by dy by dt. To get the resulting speed then of the particle, you're almost using Pythagoras for that. You've got the horizontal velocity, you've got the vertical velocity. To get the resulting speed, what you would do is you would say the speed equals, and it's the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared. Note also, the instantaneous direction of motion for the particle is given by dx by dt. And this is similar to finding the gradient of a curve at a certain point. Let's try some examples. So example one, the position of a baseball with respect to a coordinate axis at time t, t seconds, is given by x equals 6t and y equals 45t minus 4t squared. Find the speed of the baseball when t equals 7 seconds. So the first thing you want to do is you're thinking right well, you can work out the speed if you know dx by dt and dy by dt. Both x and y are written in terms of the parameter t. So we need to differentiate x with respect to t and differentiate y with respect to t. If we differentiate x with respect to t, Ms. Amel, you would get 6. Good. If you differentiate y with respect to t, Mary Lou, you would get good. 45 minus 8t. Perfect. To work out the speed then, you can say that the speed equals the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared, which will equal the square root of, and we'd have dx by dt squared, which would be 6 squared, plus this 45 minus 8t, all squared. What you could do is you could multiply out the brackets and simplify all that, but you know that the time is 7 seconds, so you can just replace t with 7. So after 7 seconds, the t, the speed, will be given by the square root of 6 squared plus 45 minus 8 times 7 squared. From there then, 6 squared is 36. If you work out 45 minus 8 times 7, it gives you negative 11. Negative 11 squared, add on 36, will give you 157. So you'd have 157, or if you put it to a decimal, 12.53 units per second. However, in advance how you tend to leave your answers as an exact value. Let's try another one. Example two, the position of a particle at time t is given by the parametric equations x equals t cos t and y equals t sine t, where t is bigger than zero. The diagram shows the path that the particle takes. Find an expression for the instantaneous speed of the particle and B, calculate the instantaneous speed of the particle at point A. So again, we're thinking, right, well, the first thing we want to do is find an expression for the instantaneous speed. So to get the speed, well, it's the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared. So we need to differentiate x with respect to t. Chasm, how would you do that? Brilliant. You would use the product rule because you've got a function in terms of t times another function in terms of t. So you've got u and you've got v. Work out u dash and v dash. u is going to be t and v is going to be cos t. u dash differentiating t with respect to t will just give you 1. And if you differentiate cos t again with respect to t, you'd have negative sine t. Therefore, dx by dt will equal u dash v plus u v dash, so you'd have 1 times cos t, plus t times negative sine t, which will make negative t sine t. Y, you need to differentiate that as well. So y equals t sine t, you need dy by dt. So again, you're using the product rule because you've got two functions in terms of t being multiplied together. So u is going to be equal to t, and v is equal to sine t. u dash will just be 1, and v dash will be cos t. dy by dt then, u dash v plus u v dash. So 1 times sine t 
which is sine t, plus t times cos t, which will be sine t plus t cos t. We want to find an expression for the instantaneous speed of the particle. Remember, the speed is given by this equation here. So we're going to get the speed by taking the square root of dx by dt squared, so this part squared, plus this part here, dy by dt squared. So over the page, let's do that. So the speed equals the square root of cos t minus t sine t, all squared, plus sine t plus t cos t, all squared. From there, we don't have much choice apart from multiplying out the brackets. So cos t minus t sine t times cos t minus t sine t. Multiply that out the way you would x plus 2 bracket x plus 2. So cos t times cos t gives you cos squared t. You would be taking away t sine t times cos t and then taking away another t sine t cos t. So you're taking away 2 t cos t sine t. And then negative t sine t times negative t sine t, well, the two negatives make a positive, t times t is t squared, and sine t times sine t is sine t squared. Multiply this out as well, so sine t plus t cos t times sine t plus t cos t. Multiply that out as well, the way you would x plus 7 times x plus 7. So sine t times sine t would give you sine squared t. You'd have sine t times t cos t, plus t cos t times sine t, so you'd have two of them, so 2 t cos t sine t, and then t cos t times t cos t, t times t is t squared, and cos t times cos t is cos squared t. So that is what we've got. From there, what could you do? Well, if you look at it, you've got a negative t cos t sine t, and we've got a plus 2 t cos t sine t, so they would cancel out. Meaning then you would have your cos squared t plus your sine squared t, if I write the cos squared and the sine squared first, then I've got a t squared sine squared t, and I've got a t squared cos squared t. So these are the four terms that I'm left with. After that, well, if you look at it, you've got a cos squared t plus a sine squared t. And you've also got a common factor here of t squared, so you could take that out of these two terms. So t squared bracket cos squared t plus sine squared t. And if you think about it, Daniel, you got it. Sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. So because sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, you can replace cos squared t plus sine squared t with 1. And you can replace t squared times this by t squared times 1, which leaves you with t squared. So that will be a formula for the speed Part B, calculate the instantaneous speed of the particle at point A. So we've got this little diagram here and we're wanting to work out the speed at this point. Well, the first thing that we're looking for is, well, we can see that point A lies on the x-axis. And you know on the x-axis, well, y is equal to zero. Therefore, we know that y is equal to, we were told this at the start, t sine t. So we know that t sine t must be equal to zero. And we know t is not equal to zero because it's zero right at the start. After a certain amount of time, the particle will be here, but it's not time zero, that's it right at the start. So we know that t is not equal to zero. And if t is not equal to zero, then sine t must be equal to zero. Because in order to multiply two bits together and get zero, well, one of them has to be zero. But t is not zero. So sine t must be equal to zero. And if sine t equals zero, we could solve that. Think about your sine graph. When is sine something equal to zero? Well, it's going to be at pi. Sine of pi will be equal to zero. Therefore, t must be equal to pi. However, what you'll notice is that this is not the first time that particle A is on your x-axis. It's the third time. So you've got the very start then, it's going to be crossing once, so it's going to cross, it's going to be a zero at pi. Then it's going to cross again at two pi. Then it's going to cross again for a third time at three pi. Think about your sine graph, it's just repeated. So it'll cross at pi, then again at two pi, then again at three pi, and that's when it'll be equal to zero. So t must be equal to 3 pi. So if you know t is equal to 3 pi, well, you can work out the speed using the answer from part A. 
So from part A, the speed was given by the square root of 1 plus t squared. But we know t is equal to 3 pi. Remember, in advanced higher, you use radians. So that'll be the square root of 1 plus 3 pi squared. And if you square 3 pi, 3 pi times 3 pi will give you 9 pi squared. So the speed will be the square root of 1 plus 9 pi squared. And really, you would leave your answer as that, because again, you're best to leave your answer as exact values. You could always go on and round it. It'd be 9.48 units per second. But as I said, it's best to leave exact values. Try these questions, but that is the end of differentiation, looking at parametric differentiation for objects in motion. Try these questions. After this, there is the review lesson, which will cover everything in differentiation. But try page 45 just now. Best of luck. Any problems, let me know.